The driver whistling on the job, Deputy Hugh Thomas, is driving a cruiser equipped with our agency's earliest in-car camera, recording him making traffic stops. Cutting to the parking lot, okay? You can't, you can't do that. Cutting a kid a break. As for the speed, you and I both know you were going faster than 49 miles an hour. Don't we? Yes, sir, we sure did. Giving friendly advice. Okay, I suggest you take the car back to him. Tell him it's a piece of junk. You don't want to buy this car. He always wanted to be a police officer. Always. Since he could say the word, he was going to be a cop. That intention became clear when Hugh was just three, in uniform, standing in an intersection. Hugh was out there directing traffic in the intersection. At three? Uh-huh, yes. Did he tell you why he wanted to do that? Because he wanted the cars to go the right way. In 1983, at just 19 and fresh out of Lake Brantley High School, Thomas was sworn in as a deputy. At 19, you can't buy your own bullet. He didn't care. Mom, let's go up to Kmart. I need some bullets. We got range tomorrow. And it just seemed like he'd already had training before he came to have his training. His friend and former roommate, Dave Comadario, says Thomas's ability to learn and retain the law was uncanny. But there was more. He was just fantastic. And like I said, he's anybody could just walk up and talk to him. And it was like your friends, like you've known each other. Sheriff Dennis Lima says Thomas's way with people shown through very early on. When it came to community placing, he was absolutely the best at it. I think we had less confrontation because of being personal. You could walk up to somebody and say, hey, how are you doing today? But his mom remembers the night Hugh made an arrest and came home hurt. And it ripped the skin off his knees and everything. He didn't care. I got him. I got him. And that's what he cared about. I got him. He won't bother anybody else now. The morning of March 28, 1989, Thomas was called to a home on McLean Lane in Geneva. A prowler was spotted in the woods carrying a rifle. When he got there, he was in good spirits, and there was a little dog in the yard. And he picked up the little dog and petted it and, and said, now you go in the house with mommy so you don't get hurt. And then he walks around to the back of the house and, and is ambushed. Yesterday, a judge had issued a restraining order to keep Mr. LeMaster away from here. It's a scene that shocks both law enforcement officers and the surrounding community. An ex-con named Tony LeMasters was waiting with his rifle perched on a fence to shoot his estranged wife and possibly two other family members when they came out of the home. Instead, when Thomas appeared, LeMasters shot and killed him then took Thomas's revolver and killed himself. Hugh dying that day saved clearly the three lives there. But just, you can't calculate how many lives he saved. Had it come to losing his own life or the lives of the three he was there to protect, Sissy Thomas says her son would not have had it any other way. I'm not sure he could have lived with himself or been as good a deputy as he was had it gone in a different direction. I honestly believe that Hugh, if he could talk after dying, he would say, okay, I saved these people, let's get on with the work. But it wasn't that easy. <laughs> I'm sorry. protecting you. For those who knew him, including Sheriff Johnny e. Polk, who'd sworn him in five years previous, Thomas's loss was shattering and has not faded with time. If he would not have been tragically taken from us, he would have been a police chief and a sheriff and, and gone on and done remarkable things. I would love for people to make that connection when they're driving down and they say, H.E. Thomas Jr. Parkway, put a face with it. It's named in his honor, his sacrifice. And mama had to buy the bullets, yep. He always did his best, always did his best.